We just trying to get it poppin' what's good Yeah, yeah Hey, both roads <laughs> So, um, I'm a pre-dental student and I just wanted to come on here real quick and just share the news that I got two dental school interviews and one is with OHSU in Oregon and USC which is in Southern California so I will basically be showing you guys how I replied to um, the email the invitation email to just interviewing to how I feel about the dental interviews and some tips and things that I did on the way to prepare for the interview as well if this is something that you're interested stay tuned and watch so device setup works start sample recording recording i'm going to do really well on this assessment yay i'm going to do really well on this assessment i'm going to do really well on this assessment yes practice respond to the following sample questions as many times as you would like it takes 13 minutes. Okay. Several days later. Okay, so I am officially done with my USC dental school interview. I just finished the MMI multiple mini interviews. And that, in some ways, it was tragic. And in some ways, it was like, okay. Um, there were a lot of questions that were not dentistry related that really threw me for a loop that I feel that I had to really I feel like more than anything I had to show my personality and how I'm open to guidance um, more than anything that I can offer and I don't know if that's I don't know if that's what they wanted but um, it is what it is um, and um, from what I've heard um, doing it this way on Kyra was definitely easier because there wasn't someone looking at you and asking you more questions and so I think I'm actually kind of grateful but um, it was definitely something I had to adjust it to the first two questions I don't think I did that great on I actually feel like I got a little bit flustered but then I was able to catch a breath and um, basically uh, give concise answers I think for me I not that I ramble, but I feel like I lose track of my thoughts. And so I always have to repeat myself at the very end to kind of like concise my answer. And so I think that's something I would also recommend. They also give you time to prep, but sometimes the prepping time isn't as equal to the timer that's on the clock. Um, I think they give you an additional two minutes to really um, um, talk. And I feel like I was kind of intimidated by that because I had only prepared a two minute answer, but there was four minutes on the clock. So I was like, wait, did they want more? <laughs> um, so that's the MMI part. And that's all I can really say about it. A lot of the questions were ethical questions. So prepare for every type of ethical question out there that can be related to dentistry. Um, <clears throat> um, especially when it comes to patient and um, being a teacher, or maybe um, you know a, an ambassador or representative of your school. Just some ethical questions on just being a leader. Uh, just just prepare for those. That's one advice I would give. I just yeah, that's my feedback on that. I just am really unsure. Oh, my neck is so stiff because like especially uh, this year, obviously it's very atypical because we are doing Zoom calls and it was just really. Hard. I think I also did I because some of these questions were very serious to me that I like I, I feel like sometimes I was answering like this like this is not acceptable and so therefore I would do this and this differently here I I want to give them smiles and positive energy but like the situation wasn't sm smiles and positive energy and that wasn't the tragic part the tragic part really was about not only was just remembering the question but trying to remember every part of the question so i would answer it answer it in complete yeah so guys um that's my literally just finished i honestly just finished and so that's my three minute um feedback on how i feel about uh university of southern california school of dentistry's um mmi interview 
and in an hour it's sunday and in an hour i also am supposed to attend like i think their orientation and i'm actually happy before when i was doing this interview i thought i was going to be asked specific questions about usc and i think that's really something that's really different because they didn't ask anything about usc um specifically like what they what i am attracted what i can bring none of that none of that they didn't bring they didn't that's not what was brought to the table And then, um, have they given you guys any indication what next year would look like, aka my first year? <laughs> no. Okay, so they're playing it by ear as well? Yeah. Okay. Several days later. Okay, guys, so I'm here to share with you my feedback on my USC interview. So I already did the MMI on Sunday. And then um, transitioning to the PBL, which was uh, three days later. So uh, I really enjoyed it. So my PBL, I, I guess I learned was different because it was all girls. And I don't think they try to categorize you. Um, I think they try to uh, split it evenly. I think it's very random. So basically there's a case study and then everyone takes a paragraph to read. For me, I when I read, you can hear my accent. I know I sound very American right now, but y'all. <laughs> When I'm reading, the A's, the C's, the S's don't sound the same as an American person would pronounce them. Um, so I was a bit intimidated about that, but I got through it, read my paragraph, kept it moving. Um, and then also speaking up, you don't want to dominate the conversation, but you also want to make your voice, make sure that the points that you're adding to the conversation is actually helpful. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I spoke at the beginning and then I realized like 10 minutes in, I hadn't spoken. So then I was like, okay, let's move. <laughs> like, let's move on to the next part. And then the faculty that was watching us, uh, watching over us um, said that, you know, we shouldn't move on. We shouldn't, we should keep continuing in this section. And I feel like my moment of taking initiative to kind of keep us on track bounce back so i would say definitely ask the faculty how long you're supposed to take on each of the sections and each of the sections were bas basically um presenting the facts of the case presenting the ideas or your hypotheses hypothesize um and then um yeah things that you would research or things that you would want to learn more and um and basically if there's a patient in the case study you can't contact them so this is something that you would do on your own without talking to the patient and oh man so the facts we we, we listed a lot there was like we had so many ideas so many ideas so many ideas and then so i was able to kind of talk more and bring more facts that i i feel like i didn't even think to pay attention to the first round um, but yeah, my my facts that I brought up were something that carried out throughout um, the learning the ideas part and the learning part. So that was useful. Um, and then ideas, we all became more comfortable, and so then I felt more comfortable to speak. And that's one of my weaknesses is that in a crowd, I am not that extroverted as most of my friends would know. I'm very intro introverted. I think before I speak, and I'm actually really conscious of how people perceive me so um yeah always have a smile when you're talking so i made sure when i was making my points i always had a smile and looked like i was eager to give this information yeah so that's something i would advise the things that we should research it was actually really funny because one of the facts that i had brought up um and my hypothesis a lot of the rest of the group kind of like supported me on that hypothesis and we were completely wrong <laughs> so i don't have an advice for that i think um that's common with other students from what i've heard too of um yeah your hypothesis will always be correct um and then at the end we just all went around and talked about why we enjoyed pbl and the strengths and the weaknesses of it um, yeah, and it was, a, it was a good conversation. I really enjoyed it. Oh, prior to the PBL, actually, we had an hour with the student ambassadors at USC. And it was informative. I learned a lot and I learned that there was a lot that they didn't have compared to other dental schools. 
and I don't think I actually want to mention them in case I end up being accepted there. <laughs> but yeah, so they were lacking in some areas, but if they're able to give me an acceptance, I am there, USC, okay? If any of these schools I've interviewed, at, if they give me an acceptance, um, if the financial aid package is good, then I will be there. Um, a little background about me as well. I'm a non-traditional student, which is really funny because I feel like I've been a non-traditional student all my life as a DACA recipient, but also I've taken a gap year. Um, and I'm also now, I have a serious relationship. So when they talk about housing and being fraternities and sororities, I know that's not going to be something available for me. And then when they talk about like, um, not bringing a car to some certain locations, I know that's not going to be an option for me. Okay. So one of the student ambassadors was very real with us and said that the USC facility um, is lacking with um, mental health resources and services for their students. And that's mainly attributed with the fact that um, a lot of the students, I guess, feel that their dental curriculum is um, fairly easier um, to manage and um, not as difficult as most other dental schools and that there's a family vibe there that like, you can lean on with each other. And I understand that completely, but there are some things that I feel like only a professional who is under like HIPAA regulations or under a contract to know about my life. Um, yeah, so I guess those resources aren't available, but there are, um, I guess, support groups on campus that they, that they have for students. And I guess also ASDA also offers help sessions to um, touch up with people. These are the words that they told me, not my own words. Oh, and my main two questions I ask every school is how competitive um, the students are with each other. Um, just because I went to an undergraduate school that there were a lot of gunners like who are pre-med and pre-dent that didn't wanna share resources or wanna even help. And then, um, what other question? Yeah, competitiveness and mental resources. Those are my two main ones because I feel like um, those are my main priorities is to know that the school that I'm going to be accepting for the next four years will be a safe environment for me. And if it's not so much of a safe environment that I have a backup um, counselor or physician to help me. Um, yeah. So I think that's my whole spiel on USC. And it was a great interview. I also was able to meet one of my friends I, I can't, she's a friend now, but she wasn't a friend. But there was one girl that, oddly enough, our interview days were the same for all the four or five um, past interviews I've had at each of these schools. Um, and it was just funny because it, it wasn't all California schools as well. So it was just interesting that we both had applied to the same schools and I recognized her in each of those sessions. But now that this, this is the last interview I have, so I reached out to her on Zoom and said like, hey, weren't you at like XYZ's interview day? I feel like you look familiar. She's like, oh my gosh, yes, I was too shy to talk to you. So definitely um, network, I guess, with other pre dent students who are applying. And I think it just makes me feel less alone. And yeah, that's all guys. I hope that was informative to you guys and hope to see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps our channel a lot. Thank you.